All right, so um, as we approach the last section of this course, let's pray and uh, let's uh, begin discussions. Um, I would like to request one of us to please lead in prayer. Kijafina? Okay, thank you for this beautiful day and for the class we are about to have, God. God, I praise each and every one of my uh, classmates into your hands, Pastor class Nancy into your hands. Uh, be with us and guide us. You have uh, called us to live the supernatural life in a natural way, Jesus. We are so grateful that you came down for us and you gave such an authority to us, God. God, as we are learning, help us to enlarge our mind, listen to it and accept it and do it in our life. God, uh, we ask for your guidance, help us to open our mind and heart and listen to it and to really understand it and apply it in our life. Jesus, be with us and guide us throughout the sessions. I pray for all my classmates who are on the way and who are about to connect. I pray that they will reach at the right time and uh, they will have a good uh, connection throughout the sessions and they will be blessed. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffina. Uh, we will go back to our notes uh, that we've been studying from so far. We came to the third section of the course, uh, Keys to Supernatural Ministry, where we are touching upon the personal preparation that all of us need to have in order for us to walk in more of the supernatural. We said intimacy is uh, so key. Uh, identity being established in identity uh, and especially when we are uh, moving in the supernatural not not making our identity about our ministry is also so important we talked about the compassion of uh, christ which led him to move in the many miracles that he did so when we carry compassion we can also see the release of god's power strengthening uh, people's lives so compassion is a very important thing we talked about holiness we said that uh, as far as holiness is concerned you know it, it's again um, our uh, posture before the lord and it's it's about desiring to go from you know one place to the higher place uh, in in holiness as well so when we are yielded in this manner we can be used as vessels uh, ready for master's use uh, we have to talk about walking in dominion and authority and then you know the remaining uh, points there which are about growing in the anointing impartation inner wholeness humility learning and expanding so i'll uh, touch upon uh, some some main uh, aspects so hopefully you know, if we are able to cover that we should be able to wrap up this course today so talking about walking in dominion and authority uh, we already know that we carry the authority of jesus because of the cross of uh, calvary jesus has already won victory over the enemy and so we need to move with the understanding of the believer's authority. If one lacks the understanding, then you know we will not step out to see demons cast out. We will not step out to see people set free from sickness and disease. We will not um, realize that we can command the storms. So understanding our dominion and authority is a very, very important aspect of moving in the supernatural. So that's important. And we see the example of Jesus. You know, Jesus, he just <coughs> commanded these demon spirits. He never really uh, had a compromise or uh, he, he did not try to negotiate because he knew his stand and he knew the place where these demon spirits need to be or their works. We read in 1 John 3 verse 8 that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And here we are now. He said, go in my name. Yeah, those who believe in me, they will cast out demons. They will speak in unknown tongues. You know, they will drink some, uh, even if they drink anything that's uh, deadly, that will not harm them. So you will trample on uh, scorpions and serpents. All of these things he has spoken about us. So the way he walked in authority today, we can also walk in authority. So here is an opportunity for the supernatural. When we see 
some form of op affliction or oppression immediately you now our mind should go to hey wait a minute this is not in line with the kingdom of god how about i take authority and call the kingdom of god to manifest in this situation you now when jesus cast out the demon in matthew chapter 12 we see that uh, he did it by the finger of god and what happened the kingdom of god came upon them right so he he says after casting out that demon he says the kingdom of god has come upon you we too can bring the kingdom of god by walking in dominion and authority and another very important thing we must remember is we should not be afraid of any backlash and that is a mistake that a lot of believers do they get scared they step out uh, but then they they think that what if satan attacks me back for uh, you know uh, going against his kingdom so they have all these thoughts we must be very clear that there is no need to be afraid of the evil powers and we've dealt with this uh, in detail when we talked about believers authority that satan and his kingdom is no comparison first of all to the kingdom of god that is true uh, however he is very smart with his tactics but praise god the cross of calvary has destroyed the devil you know satan has been crushed he has been expelled he has been dethroned uh, you know we've seen all these words and because of which we now who are vested with the authority that jesus gave us we can go against the devil and we don't have to let him do his thing in people's lives so this is the way in which we approach dominion and authority when we talk about the supernatural so just take authority whenever you see um, something which is not of the kingdom of god so our uh, class you can interrupt me any time i'm just continuing so that you know we can complete the portions uh, the next key preparation over here is growing in the anointing we already discussed regarding uh, uh, the anointing being one of those keys to supernatural ministry what is the anointing it's the presence and the power of god which is released uh, through the life of an individual when they are ministering so we at that point when we talked about the anointing we said one can also grow in the anointing one can increase in the anointing because there are uh, greater measures of anointing present in the kingdom of god so for personal preparation to walk in the supernatural i can grow in the presence of god the power of god the release of that to accomplish god's works uh, so this is something we must desire we must desire and we must you know, go after this when we talk about the anointing primarily we are focusing on the ministry uh, aspects and uh, you know when paul was a minister of god he had a calling from god you know to uh, do certain things he was called as an apostle uh, we also you know see incredible anointing for teaching upon his life he carried certain graces on his life what was were these graces about they had to do with the calling so if he's called as an apostle he carries the grace to be an apostle or the ability that god gives he carried the grace to be one and so the calling the grace and the anointing right they work together to demonstrate the power of god so according to his calling according to his grace the anointing was manifesting through his life now take for example you know if we have uh, somebody who is uh, called as a teacher their calling is a teacher then what grace will they have they will have the ability to teach so they'll have the grace to teach and not just that there will be an anointing in that teaching ministry the anointing is the power of god which will obviously you know it will bring revelation we've also seen that jesus taught they came to listen and be healed so 
healing is demonstrated as teaching uh, is taking place so many things happen by the power of god but it is connected to the call and the grace of god so let's assume somebody has this teaching anointing they get grow maybe initially you know they uh, are, are teaching a small group uh, in their home uh, and that's about it the revelation which they carry they're able to equip these people but as they go forward they see that god is giving them deeper revelation you know deeper understanding about the things of god so you know they are able to minister to a larger number of people uh, maybe as time goes by you know they are growing and growing and growing and, and frankly the limit is what we put on it okay so one can grow in the anointing of god which is connected to the call and the grace of god over their life so if one is called as a pastor they are ministering uh, with a certain anointing when they first start out but as they go forward it is possible for the person to keep growing and growing so you know, we might look at them and say hey five years ago when i saw you this is how you were but now wonderful things are happening you've grown in the anointing so each of us even when it comes to the supernatural ministry we can grow in the anointing and we can uh, experience greater possibilities in the kingdom of god okay greater manifestations of the power of god but for that one has to desire the growth is it possible to not grow very much because paul tells timothy don't neglect the gift which is in you okay but fan it to flame so even though one carries calling one has been given the grace of god they may have a level of anointing they can neglect it or you know they may never really utilize it use it effectively and you know uh, just remain stagnant there uh, or some so we we understand when we talk about the gifts of the spirit that gifts can be dormant right they can quietly sit within us never being used not being activated so that's not a good thing in the supernatural ministry we must desire to first of all understand what do i carry what grace do i carry what is god's calling on my life where is my anointing at right now okay how to increase it you know how to become more effective in that anointing god gives but we have a responsibility but if we are not going to do our part though god has given the anointing you know we remain stationary right we remain a uh, uh, sort of dormant and that's not helpful in the supernatural ministry we need to keep growing and increasing um, increased measure increased expression of the anointing of god in and through our lives and for that everything that we talked about anointing would apply so just feel free to uh, you know stop and uh, ask questions because i i know that these are all areas where we actually might have questions so yeah so for personal preparation grow in the anointing of god uh, next we are coming to impartation okay so for us to function in the supernatural we can also understand about impartation how it works and also receive impartation from those who may be operating in the same anointing you know that you probably carry the same grace that that you carry on your life so how does impartation work Now, as far as the bible is concerned it is possible to impart we've talked about it uh, you have examples like elijah elisha moses and the 70 elders um, we have uh, the anointing of elijah which is later imparted to john the baptist in the new uh, testament so anointing is 
transferable it can be imparted it's a fact even paul you know when he talks to uh, some of the churches he says hey i'm desiring to come to you so that i might impart a gift to you so impartation is very much possible but here are the things that we must recognize you know when we uh, deal with impartation now all of us want an impartation wow if my anointing will increase through impartation i desire impartation let it happen in my life let me get what that other person has the anointing in which the other person is flowing that's a good thing but the right biblical understanding of impartation is crucial otherwise this aspect of the anointing could even be misused uh, unfortunately it is misused as well okay so first and foremost we must recognize that impartation is from god okay? in uh, john 3:27 uh, we see jesus said no one can receive anything unless it is given to him from heaven so we are talking about imparting god's anointing how is it that a human can impart god's anointing to another human we can't do it anointing comes from god so it's the lord even though elisha desired the anointing of elijah elijah said hey wait a minute if you want it then you got to do all these things and then you will receive from god right so he never really laid hands and said oh, okay you want double i'll give you double take double it's not for human beings to give and take we can desire it but ultimately it's god who put the anointing on somebody's life he will put the anointing on our lives so see god and our impartation comes from heaven but yes we can desire you know from another person's life and god will do the task of putting it upon us so we should not run after people okay that's the reason we are saying like okay give me your anointing give me your anointing it doesn't work like that people cannot give and take each others anointings it comes from god it comes from heaven now impartation of the anointing here are a couple of other things that we must understand impartation only takes place aligned to god's gifting and calling in our lives now let's just take for example somebody who is a carpenter that carpenter can only train a junior carpenter let's say a junior electrician goes to a carpenter okay and gives him all his knowledge the electrician can only use what is useful in his line of work rest information will not be useful for him rest of the impartation will not be useful for him because here's a carpenter and you know uh, there is an electrician who's been trained under him just for us to recognize that similarly you know, there are different gifts graces callings of god on people's lives though impartation happens from god what can be utilized or you know what is expressed through our ministry is what is aligned to our calling so to make it clearer let's just say there is a person who has a teaching anointing they are associated with somebody who uh, is in worship but maybe this teaching person cannot sing you know uh, at all at all absolutely cannot sing so even though they are associating with the you know worship anointing singing all that we cannot expect this person who can teaching anointing to suddenly start singing it won't work okay but there will be an impartation which will be aligned to the teaching who knows maybe they might do some some kind of a song writing writing scripts something something aligned to the ability that god has given that teaching person Okay, so this shows us that people in the kingdom of God, ministers in the kingdom of God, cannot be replicas. You see, one person with all these anointings, another person associated with them becomes just like 
you know, the first person. It doesn't happen like that. Even if we are associated with a man of God or a woman of God, the anointing which is imparted to us is aligned to our calling, our grace and our gifting. So that is something we must recognize. And impartation usually takes place through association. Association. Okay. Now, it's possible that we may not be able to physically you know, attend meetings of certain, you know, men and women of God or uh, go and, you know, meet them in person. So it doesn't matter. Association can also be from a distance. So when we read books, listen to sermons, um, listen to songs, what happens? There is a level of impartation from that ministry from that anointing which can come upon us okay so how can impartation come um, impartation primarily comes through association so when we associate with you know ministries people of god we receive from their ministries okay now impartation impartation takes place in a measure that we've already discussed we looked at Moses and we said, wow, what a leader, what a prophet, what a man of God. But his 70-member team did not get all that. They got some leadership anointing, but not the, the level that Moses had. Neither did they uh, get described as prophetic or anything. So a measure of the anointing which was on Moses was imparted to the leaders. Similarly, when we are associated with ministers or ministries, we don't see, you know, all the anointing that one person carries come to us, impart, getting imparted to us. No. Maybe measures and parts of the anointing may get imparted. Then, uh, ultimately, what we receive is what God gives us that we've uh, understood it's not through a human agent now here is the most important thing about impartation impartation can happen but nurturing and developing the anointing now is the responsibility of the individual who has received the impartation now sometimes there is an assumption that people have that, okay, I can go to this meeting. I'll get the impartation of uh, this particular uh, man of God, woman of God. Yeah, praise God. I, I have an impartation. I have an impartation. There is an impartation, all right. But let's say a teaching impartation. The person who received the impartation has to now study. They have to, you know, uh, step out and teach. They have to, you know, learn on the job as they're teaching. They have to get better. They have to understand the flow of the anointing. There are so many things which uh, are the responsibility of the person who now received the impartation. You understand? So receiving an impartation doesn't mean that one will experience the kind of ministry that they saw in that man or woman of God who are doing ministry. They have used their anointing. And that's how you know, they, they are ministering the way that they are. Now, the individual who has received the impartation has the responsibility to nurture, to develop, to grow in the anointing. And they have to make their own journey. Okay, so... These are also practical things about impartation that one must understand. Okay, so I hope uh, you're all okay with that. Any doubts, any questions? Impartation, you know, it's a very talked about subject in the Christian circle. Okay. Yeah, so if you come up with a question, please do stop me and uh, let's discuss. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, Pastor, so impartation works even if 
people don't have faith like uh, you may pray for them <laughs> pray for them to receive the anointing but what if they don't they have no idea about it <laughs> or what if they don't believe in it does it happen like that even if they don't okay so you're saying can can a person receive the impartation without faith uh so our understanding would be jafina that no they can't okay so we cannot uh receive an impartation without faith because the anointing the gifts of the spirit everything is operational only by faith right so yeah you can if you if there's no faith you can't receive it so which is another reason why later we will study about expectation so when we are talking about supernatural ministry for us that sense of expectation is very important we have to desire the way elisha he looked at elisha and thought wow i want what he has so one needs that expectation and faith to actually get it so without uh, you know faith and desire you can't people use all this terminology you can't pull on the anointing people also say that you know when you come to receive uh expect and put a demand on the anointing they use all this language it simply means the receiver needs desire and faith okay without that it won't happen good question very good question actually yeah any anything else about impartation anointing in fact there's a sermon which uh, pastor had done on anointing and impartations i would highly recommend you can uh, go and look at it from the apc resources section uh, you'll have a very good base so here at the bible college we have a session known as uh, like before graduation usually we used to uh, the previous day we pray for all our students we lay hands and pray for impartation so intentionally we pray over them and uh, you know we pray something like lord everything that we have we we impart it to these students and even the students we encourage them to desire whatever you desire you pull that's why when uh, paul writes about spiritual gifts he says earnestly desire something about you know desiring wow they moving in the super i i really want to be there i want i really want to see the power of god like that you know when we have that longing we'll we'll notice that those things start happening in our lives but if you're like okay whatever it will not manifest so expectation desire faith uh, is important so we encourage the students and hopefully now that you know covid is through and we have started our uh, classes here on campus uh, for graduation uh, i think we might resume having these sessions where we lay hands and pray for impartation okay all right now moving on uh, some more uh, important things for uh, personal preparation is inner wholeness okay inner wholeness as such it's important for you know just abundant life uh, as a child of god as a believer as a minister of course but more so for the supernatural ministry okay because if i am not whole within me you know i could be a slave of fear or condemnation or guilt or lust or pride or jealousy or bitterness see these are all open doors for the enemy uh it's like saying we talked about anointing and we said uh, okay the anointing will flow through our lives and we said we are conduits of the anointing like a pipe right so when there's a nice strong pipe the water flows the bigger the pipe that is our personal preparation for the anointing the more water flows greater anointing flows but what if there are holes in the pipe we don't want that so which is why inner wholeness on the part of a minister is so key so we may all start off with with challenges with issues maybe anger we see it in our own lives and we say god uh, 
let those strongholds be uprooted oh god and you know we we begin to work with the lord every time we find ourselves committing a mistake we go back and say i'm god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry this should not have happened but it has happened but you receive god's forgiveness receive god's healing holy spirit come work in my heart you know are there some areas that i've not dealt with because we don't want any foothold for the devil why do don't we want it remember we said we want to be a vessel of honor ready for the master's use cleansed that's what paul wrote to timothy and said you cleanse yourself from all these evil things then you will be a dedicated vessel you will be holy unto the lord you know for him to use but if you are not holy unto the lord and if as i shared you know through that illustration just for our understanding holes from where the anointing is leaking or Uh, Paul tells the Ephesian church, "Don't give the devil a foothold. We give him footholds in our lives. He'll come and pollute, corrupt, okay, uh, taint what we carry. And then, when we minister, you would notice that many times our ministry will have uh, the 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 effects." okay for example if i carry bitterness towards somebody in the ministry okay some other minister of god that i'm preaching uh whether i like it or not that inner hurt will show in its expression the way i'm saying things about that person or uh you know the way i i talk to people about that minister of god it's showing in my ministry i've not dealt with my own personal hurt or my bitterness or maybe it's jealousy the way uh, you know i minister jealousy will be seen in my ministry right the examples i use or uh, let's say somebody is uh, open to uh, lust and uh, sexual immorality as a minister of god um, it's very dangerous it just begins to show in the way we we do things the boundaries that we keep in our lives uh you know slowly 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 those boundaries those right walls uh, they'll all start breaking and maybe initially people cannot tell but eventually they might be able to see uh, in the things that we are doing the way we are behaving the standards that we have for god's people uh in the church and all that they might they might begin to even notice that hey something is wrong uh, because this person has opened their lives up to uh, such ungodly things they never dealt with it they've not been whole made whole from the inside so you see it's very important for a minister of god to keep track of, of ourselves uh, paul tells timothy you know you need to be aware timothy of your own life and your own doctrine what is it that you're believing in what is it that you're living how are you doing the ministry you have to self regulate you have to be most aware of what is going on from time to time keep a good internal check and ensure that you're moving with wholeness inner wholeness if we lack inner wholeness there'll be all kinds of biases uh, in the way we minister and uh, that's not good because it does not glorify god so we must be careful not to mix up the anointing with you know impurities uh, and an unhealed soul if there are issues in ourselves it's important to uh, seek healing and walk in that path of healing to maintain it so that our ministry is not tainted with it so that's important to uh, in even in supernatural ministry the next key thing is humility you know we uh, touched on that when we uh, said uh, uh, we talked about identity that how one must not uh, become you know uh, so overcome by oh supernatural things are happening through my life so you know i am like this i am like that that you border on arrogance but what is humility humility is a right understanding of who we are before god you know we we know oh hey god is god i am a child of god i am empowered by god's word by his spirit by the new creation that i have become and that is why god's power is flowing out of my life so our position before god is humility we know okay 
this is how you're positioned with humility and it's when you're humble that god is able to impart more grace to us and james 4 6 it says that god gives grace to the humble and you know grace is god's empowering so if i want more empowering of god how can i receive it god will only give it to somebody who's humble because he gives more grace to the humble so if i want to receive god's grace i must ensure that i'm in a position of humility before god humility right in uh, relating to people around me so humility and humiliation are two separate things you know humiliation is putting oneself down that's not what we are talking about we are talking about humility or the right identity before god where we give god the glory for all that he is doing yes we are delighted that wow god your power is working through my life but we are careful to give god all the glory so walk in humility and you know uh, it, it is also said that the higher up we go in ministry we need more grace to function you know uh, in in those positions but how are we going to get more grace if you don't have humility we need to have humility to receive more grace from God. So, you know, wow, what a beautiful dynamics uh, dynamics God has, uh, uh, you know, caused to exist. That the higher we go, we need more grace. But for more grace, we need more humility. So the higher you go, the lower actually you need to go. Okay, so that's the way God has uh, orchestrated it, and one must move in humility, and especially when it comes to supernatural ministry. There are so many occasions when people will say, Pastor, you prayed, it happened. Brother, you laid hands, it happened. You called out that day, you remember? And the moment we hear things like this, you know, we're like human beings. Somewhere there's that flattery and we have that inclination. Oh, great, you know, I did it. You know, I actually fasted for three days and that's how this happened. But instead of going on that mode of uh, self um, uh, you know, glorification and self-promotion, immediately we must say, God, we want to thank you for your power. Lord, you work through my life. Thank you so much. Lord, I praise you. And the more miracles happen, the more things happen through our ministry, the more humility we need to walk in. Otherwise, you know, our mind uh, will get distracted. So humility is very important for supernatural ministry. The next key here is learning and expanding. So you see, uh, Jesus on the or on the Sermon on the Mount, he said, "The hungry, blessed are those who hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled." Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. But you see, hunger and thirst is something that will fill us. So if we ever reach a point in our journey where we say, I already know anointing. Yeah, yeah, I heard that message from pastor. Two, three times I heard it. I already know. I know, I was, you know, point number one, point number two, point number five. There we stop in our growth. But see, the way the Spirit of God works, the way the Word of God, it's like a, it's, it's like an ocean where you can keep diving and diving and diving and discovering new things in the ocean and being amazed by it. There's no end to it. So even when it comes to supernatural ministry, in our journey, we can just keep learning, keep expanding. We can read books uh, uh, about how God has worked in, in his history. We can uh, learn from other ministers of God. We can learn from brothers and sisters around us uh, and see, wow, is this how you prayed? Oh, wow. Is that how the gift manifested? Uh, oh, okay, I shouldn't be doing this. Okay, maybe I should pray like that. So it's a it's a quest of a lifetime where we are learning, we are growing, we are enjoying, we are delighting in what God is doing. So in the supernatural ministry, that's very important, very important. We don't know it all. We'll never know it all. So it gives us so much scope to observe, to learn and expand. Okay, so that desire is important. Always keep the hunger. Never say, oh, I finished uh, KSM, Keys to Supernatural Ministry. I finished it in second year. It's not like that. It's just, a, just the uh, stepping stone 
uh, you know, if you would put it that way, for us to begin to explore more uh, and receive more from God. So always keep the hunger and keep, uh, you know, journeying with the Lord. So now here, section four, a little bit about the pursuit of the supernatural. A couple of things that we will touch upon. First is expectation. As uh, we said earlier, expectation and desire is a key thing. So as we read in the Bible, different uh, different scriptures and mandates and blessings and the provision of God's power and the victory of the cross, we get excited. We're like, wow, is this, is this so? I recently met a, a, a couple. Uh, they are from a very traditional sort of a Christian background where their church did not believe in the supernatural. But after years of attending that community, a question came within themselves reading the Bible that, hey, how come we can't expect healing? They, they were taught that you know, healing is not for today. Holy Spirit is not for today. Supernatural things don't happen, you know, things like that. Within themselves, they had that expectation and they said, no, there must be something more because the Bible talks about it. You know, John 14, 12, Jesus said, you shall do greater things than these. So a sense of expectation they had. And they used to talk, that couple was telling me, they used to talk to themselves. I know we are not being taught all these things, but when we read the Bible, the Jesus that we are being introduced to is not the Jesus that moves in the Gospels. His promises still somewhere something is incomplete and then they shared about how um, you know uh, by just by meditating on the word of god they started looking they started searching and then somehow somehow you know, they heard about the holy spirit they heard about the anointing they heard about so many things faith and all that and uh, uh, they they began to understand that the teaching that they were they were receiving had limited you know, the, the actual picture of God for them. So you see expectation. And what did the expectation do for uh, such uh, such people? They landed up, you know, in, in uh, a ministry uh, like ours. And they're exploring, exploring new things, learning new things. Basically, they, they've come to learn. Hey, tell us more. Tell us more about the power of God. Tell us more about the Holy Spirit. Tell us more about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But they had an expectation. What if they didn't have an expectation? They say, oh, forget it. Nothing. That's all. We already know everything. God's power cannot flow. We need that desire. Everything we learn, it's opening up possibility. And then from there, we begin to desire, oh, wow, God, is this here in your word? I want it. I want to see it in my life. I want to see it in my ministry. So expectation is very important to manifest God's power. It's very important to see the greater works. It's very important uh, for demonstration you know, of, of uh, the power of God. It's very important for uh, us to see new expressions of God's glory. Okay, so expectation, maintain that expectation. Uh, just three more things that we will touch on and close off. I know your time is running out, but just give me an additional couple of minutes. Next is taking risks. Uh, we all know, though faith is spelled F-A-I-T-H, faith is also spelled R-I-S-K. When Jesus told Peter, come. It was a risk. Imagine Peter stepped out. What if he had sunk the very first time he kept his foot out? But he took a risk. Faith. He said, no. That word of God which sustains the world. Jesus said, come. Good enough for me. I'm stepping out. And he actually walked on the water. So maybe praying for somebody with sickness. You see someone. Okay, you sense, oh, demon. Some demon issue. It feels risky. What if nothing happens? What if they laugh at me? Yeah, you know, what if, uh, I, I know a minister of God, he says, he when he prayed for people, apparently people died after he prayed. So he expected them to be healed, but people actually died. So you imagine, 
he said initially that used to happen but then my my faith grew to a place where i'm seeing more healings now not that you know every time i i pray for someone they are healed and i don't know all the answers but at least more is happening now compared to earlier but for that that individual needed to take the risk faith is a risk to function in the gifts of the spirit we're taking a risk right so we need that attitude that we say god it's okay i'm not so worried about my reputation it's about your kingdom i will step out so take risks then stepping up to higher levels so we need to have the desire to be stretched to say yes there is more in god i am at a certain place experiencing and encountering god in this way but hey i am willing to make more sacrifices i am willing to commit more i am willing to learn more you know i am willing to change more these are all things we need when we saying god i'm willing to give you more of my life god i'm willing to surrender more so when we do things like this what happens we can experience the more which is in god we can step into higher realms and you know uh, paul told this he said that we now are in the new covenant which is a greater covenant right and uh, we we live a more glorious life in the spirit we have a more glorious ministry of the spirit so so much more needs to be happening and one has to uh, uh, allow god to lead them into that more and expect increase god is the one who gives the increase first corinthians 36 so if god can give the increase i want the increase i want to see increase in the supernatural ministry of my life increase in the anointing to minister the word increase in the anointing to bring people into his kingdom increase uh, in supernatural demonstrations of god increase in you know the number of people that i'm touching so all this will happen when we yield ourselves to step into higher realms because it's available it is available in god and finally finally the last point uh, of this course would be being relentless relentless simply means don't give up don't give up we may have some failures uh, you know as part of our journey but you see that's how we learn and just because we depend on god's word have faith in it and step out and it doesn't work we can't say oh forget it the supernatural is not for me no 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 try again pray again command again believe again declare again right so being relentless is very important when we say no god if it is in your word it's got to happen my experience can change i know your word cannot change that is being relentless you keep at it till you see the word manifest my experience will change but i will not give up if jesus said that i will do greater works i will do greater works because just because i failed john 14 12 will not change right so aim for the standard of the word of god you shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover laid hands laid hands not happening not happening no problem that scripture will not change so till you see people being healed by laying hands on them keep laying hands keep going for it so be relentless we will definitely face uh, there will be challenges there will be opposition there will be persecution there will be disappointment you know there will be misunderstanding so many things can happen along the way as you're pursuing the supernatural ministry it may not be easy after all but we got to stay with it we got to stay on course and we got to keep pursuing the glory of god because isn't it god who said you know the latter glory right will be greater than the former okay so 
we are living in those days when god has promised i will pour out my spirit on all flesh and you will see the supernatural you will see uh, you know young people old people you will see many many people moving in the glory of god so we must not give up and we must uh, hold on to god so let me just quickly uh, summarize and we will close in prayer so we said for personal preparation one must um, equip themselves in intimacy identity compassion holiness walking in dominion and authority growing in the anointing impartation inner wholeness humility learning and expanding so 10 points um, that we observe will be helpful for our personal preparation and four pointers here to keep us on track uh, for the pursuit of the supernatural one is expectation second is taking risks third is stepping up to higher levels fourth is being relentless okay so uh, we will surrender uh, to god whatever we've learned i i believe the holy spirit will continue to remind us and help us see more of the supernatural in and through our lives so could somebody please pray as we close off not just this class but this course uh, and i really hope uh, it was useful and i highly recommend that you listen to last year's sessions on keys to supernatural ministry as well we have the advantage of everything being available on youtube and i'm sure you'll be blessed uh, pastor ashish is teaching that course in the previous semester uh, videos and uh, you know you'll definitely be blessed by it okay so can somebody please pray Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day. And we really thank you for this course, Lord. We thank you for Nancy, ma'am, for being such a blessing to us by teaching us uh, this whole thing, God. God, as I surrender all my classmates into your hands, as we have learned, God, uh, help us to take it into our heart and to take risk uh, as Faith is spelled out as risk. Uh, help us to have that strong faith in you, just like we did, to walk in the water with you, uh, to walk through the fire with you, Jesus. Help us to have such a faith in our heart and help us to move boldly so that we can glorify your name, Jesus. Once again, we thank you for this supernatural things, Jesus. We thank you that you love us so much, that you gave us all these authorities, and you have filled us with such a power because of your love, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for every single thing. We thank you for all the days that the class has happened, where you spoke with us, where the Holy Spirit spoke with us. And we thank you, Jesus. We love you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining together. Uh, and we trust that uh, you will see more of the supernatural in and through your life and ministry. So God bless you all. Keep pursuing the supernatural. Okay. Uh, thank you. Bye. God bless.